So Tolkien was apparently drawing analogues between real life groups of people. You know, uh, he, he compared the, um, the elves to the, you know, the haughty French and the hobbits were the working class British who if you roused them to action, they could do great things. Would you agree that the elves are particularly French? I mean... <laughs> French, I hadn't really factored that in. Um, but what I, what I do like about um, Tolkien's uh, opinion of them, that he hints at, yeah. it's, it's very subtle, but the fact that they are pursuing sort of scientific excellence mm -hmm. and, um, and machinery and, that, and all that kind of thing that he, he mistrusted. And I, I love the fact that he gives them those qualities, that they are, they are pursuing excellence, which is to be applauded, but in, in directions that perhaps he didn't approve of very much. And, sure. and I enjoy that kind of uh, double-edgedness about them. Little pointy-eared Oppenheimers just sort of futzing around in their workshops. You've put it very well. Right, well, <laughs> I'm very curious about the jewel crafting thing, because it's always nice when, you know, two friends to get together and start a new business. Mm. So it was a really nice moment. But yeah. watching the two of you beaming at each other, knowing how badly it's going to pan out is heartbreaking. <laughs> I mean, knowing what's going to happen to your characters, more or less, mm. does that affect your performance at all? Do you sort of map it out in advance? Um, I think no. I think you obviously just have it in the back of your mind, and and perhaps try and play against any moments that take you there, and then therefore when it happens, um, the nature of quite quite of which we're not yet sure, but but um, when the shift happens, so that it's more unsettling for for all of us and for the viewer. I think it's um, it's good to, to try and play against it as much as possible. Mm. Elrond is a real sweetheart. I didn't know that he harboured such kind of warmth for other races. The bromance that happens in this show with you and your dwarven friend is genuinely wonderful. Okay. For people who don't want spoilers, is that going to go off the rails? Is that, is that going to, or are they going to be steadfast friends for the whole time? Who knows? We, we shall have to see. But, but I think one of, the, you know, one of the great things about that relationship is there is so much heart in it. They really do love each other, and it, it well, really is it, really it really is a very close relationship, and I really love that about Elrond as well that he has friends and he feels complicated about the things that he has to, to do sometimes. It, it, it is very complex mm. um, and it's really, really fun to play. Did you go back and study Hugo Weaving's performance or did you just kind of pour yourself whole cloth into the script and kind of let that guide you? Well, my first port of call was the first stage books because there's so much of his history there. Yeah. Um, you know, your brother creates Numenor and your mother and father saved the world. It's a lot to live up to. It's yeah. a lot of pressure that he's living <laughs> under. <laughs> um, you know, so he's far closer to the choice that he made to become an immortal or to be counted amongst the immortals mm. than he is to the Council of Elrond or uh, all of the things that we understand about Elrond. So um, beginning him there, at the, uh, that part, part of his journey was like what I was most passionate about initially. And how do you both feel about um, Galadriel's following in her uncle's footsteps, at least at the start? Because, I mean, Theonor is a massive dick, and it's such a shame to see her sort of succumbing to the need to... I mean, vengeance is a very toxic thing, isn't it? It doesn't seem very elven. Actually, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah I mean, you just got to look at, you know... Yeah. The fall, the, the, yeah, the fall of the fall of Gondolin, yeah. yeah, the fall of of of, uh, of um, the Gothrond or, or or any of those massive kingdoms, mm. they fall because of some version of that. You know, it's it's like I think it's a, you know, it's a great thing to speak about when we're thinking about elves is how much they screw each other over, in, especially in the first stage. Yeah. Well. Uh, ending on the note of tragic hubris is fine with me. Okay, uh, good, good. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Not at all. Thank you. Thanks, fellas.